Waiguruji ka kasa, Waiguruji ki fateh. Thank you once again for joining me on Positive Minds. Me, Jake Singh, on the Sikh channel. Positive Minds is a program on which I like to bring on inspirational and informative individuals who give us advice and information on how we can better our lives and us people around us. Recently, I've released my book, Unbreakable, which is a story of uh, my story of a Sikh, young Sikh family growing up in East London in the 1970s, surrounded by hate crime and how we got through it. Also, you can follow me on Twitter at Jake Singh underscore I can for constant, constant motivation. OK, so today's guest on Positive Minds is an amazing young lady who is doing some great work as a human activist activist and is also supporting domestic abuse. I'd like to introduce to you guys Sudesh Powell. Sudesh, thank you so much for joining us today on uh, Positive Minds. Thank you much, very much for having me, Jag. Thank you, thank you. Sudesh is based in the United Kingdom in the West Midlands and as I said she's doing some great work. So Sudesh, please tell us about the great work you're doing please. Yes, yeah, sure. So I've been uh, working as a women's rights human and human rights activist for around 25 years now. And uh, my, most of my work has involved working with victims of abuse. So that's either domestic abuse or child sexual exploitation and grooming. So uh, started out as a volunteer, um, was studying at college to become a therapeutic counsellor and uh, was introduced to the world of um, refuge provision for women who were homeless and families who were homeless who had been affected by domestic abuse. And that's where my journey started. I started volunteering for an organization and um, I've been doing it now, for, like I said, for 25 years. Wow, that's amazing, that's amazing. So Sudesh, so everybody has a story, right? Like I, I wrote my book because I had a story and I wanted to get the uh, message out about anti-bullying, about hate crime, you know, this all needs to stop. Um, what's your story? What made you want to do this? What made you want to go into this field? So um, I've always wanted to get into a field of work where I could help people. And um, funny enough, I was very much brought up on Bollywood and Punjabi movies. And uh, as you know, those old Punjabi movies, there was atrocities against women, but it wasn't something that I witnessed in my in my home life. And then I married and I was actually from Hertfordshire, which was very white Western. And we were very few Asian families there. Um, and I came to Birmingham and I saw what was happening. And um, after I had my first son, I thought I wanted to do something about what's going on. And, and I was witnessing things yeah. in the community. So that's why I went off after I had my son to be trained as a counsellor. And I thought, I've got Punjabi skills. I can help women from my own community. Um, I knew drink was a problem. So um, that's how it all started. I wanted to, I always wanted to make a difference. Funny enough, at the time, I wanted to be a police officer when I was at school. But at that time, there were height restrictions. And I am only four foot 11. So there was Aww. no way I was going to the police force so um yeah i thought i'd um, try something else um and my motive has always been to make a difference to people's lives and um um help people to stop people from abusing but help victims who have been through it to show them that there is life afterwards and that they can continue on with their lives in a in a free and um thriving way so that that was, became my ambition Excellent, excellent, superb, superb. I mean, that's, that's amazing. And besides all the human activist work you're doing and uh, violence, uh, abuse, domestic mm -hmm. abuse, great work you're doing, um, you're also part of an organisation called the Sikh Women's Action Network. Please tell me more about that. Yeah, so um, about six years ago, um, I started talking to some other women in the community because, because I was working in the domestic abuse sector and I worked a lot with Asian women. Um, of the Asian women, um, Sikh women were the least likely to come forward. And I knew that from the victims that I'd supported, and I, I've supported hundreds, uh, probably thousands of women over this time. So my children were older, and, and so they didn't need as much looking after. And I could commit time to setting up a voluntary organisation where we could encourage more women from the Sikh community to come forward uh, and seek help, really. Um, and that's that's what happened. So we, we got together, we, we decided to form an organisation. We're a community um, charitable organisation, what we call a community interest company. And eventually now, six years on, um, we are now commissioned by the Police Crime Commissioner. 
Um, we've also had lottery funding to deliver training. That's my other part of my role. I'm qualified to train adults, so I can teach people how to work with victims. Um, and so I've trained professional housing officers, social workers, been to the West Midlands Ambulance Service to, have, to show them how to spot the signs and what to look out for, what sort of things should they be looking around and, and how to speak to victims as well. Because it's one of the most daunting things is for a victim to actually say, I need help. So that, that's basically the other part. That's how the journey started um, over this last six years. And we're, we're really well established. We're part of a wider partnership now delivering a 24 hour helpline across the West Midlands. So um, it's growing slowly, slowly. It's growing bigger and bigger. Um, and, um, and hopefully one day we'll have our own refuge to provide support to victims as well. Excellent. That is amazing. That is amazing, Sadish, because I'm going to put cards on the table here. Yeah, I come from a Sikh family, obviously. I grew up within, within a Sikh uh, community. Um, sadly, sadly, I was brought up with the belief that it's, uh, domestic violence is OK. Yeah, I'm not, I'm, and it's not only in the Sikh culture, there's many other cultures as well, yeah, but many people are brought up to think it's okay to hit the wife now and again and hit the children now and again. And to me, that was a norm. Only when I came to a certain age and I realised that, you know, equality, diversity, you know, I educated myself, I found out, wait a minute, it's not acceptable. It's not acceptable. Mm. Do you think within this kind of taboo subject is still covered in the Sikh community, Sudesh. Do you think it's still covered? Do you think it still goes on and people are not talking about it? Enough women aren't coming forward or men aren't coming forward to say that, you know, I need yeah. help? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And that's why we're still getting referrals. I mean, like I said, over my time, I know that the Sikh community were the least likely to come forward. But because now we've set up, 80% of our uh, families coming to us are from the Sikh community and the others we've got people from the Muslim community, the black community coming forward, but 80% are still from the Sikh community and every day we're getting calls. I've had emails this week from people who need help. I've had telephone calls from people who need help. Um, and so it's still happening. And the, the um, really scary thing about it happening in South Asian communities and the Sikh community is that it's not one person. Um, if you look at the white Western world, it's normally their perpetrators, their partner, their husband or their wife or girlfriend. So it's just one other person. In our communities, it's a network of people. It's the extended family. It's in-laws, it's mother-in-laws, sister-in-laws, father-in-laws and so on. Um, and, and yeah, we've had some male victims come through the door as well. Um, and again, for them, it's, it's the extended family. So you're not up against one person, you're up against multiple people. And then you've got your culture to think about, your honour. So people talk about birsti. Um, and then you talk about things like um, racism in the community, either either from the professional agencies or... <laughs> yeah. So it's barrier after barrier. So it's not you know, you're not breaking down one barrier to come forward. You've got to get over a lot of hurdles, um, which makes it really difficult for people to report. But there are so many people, and I would go as far as saying, and I haven't got the research to back this up, but from my own experience of working in this field, I think it happens more in our communities than it does in the white Western world. So, um, and I would put my, you know, put, put my name out there on the back of that to say, yeah, I've seen it. So everybody I talk to from our community, either experiencing it or knows somebody who's experiencing, when they find out what I do, they say to me, oh, that happened to me. You know, which whether it's physical, whether it's emotional, financial. And and thing is, our community did so well when they came from abroad, emigrated here. You know, we came here, we worked, our parents worked really hard. They established businesses. And um, they became, started becoming educated, and specifically the Sikh community I'm talking about. Um, and we contribute, we do so much seva. And I think people from other communities think, oh, they're okay. You know, that community is doing really well. They're really well established. You know, look, look how they're paying into the tax system. Their children are educated. They're fine. But actually, people don't realize what goes on behind closed doors. And there's a huge amount of abuse going on and very and specifically I would say financial abuse um, because there's wealth in the community um, there is a lot of financial abuse as well. Um, 
That's amazing because coming from you, Sadesh, you know, you're an expert, you've been in this field for 25 years and you still think there is an issue within the Sikh community for uh, domestic violence. And that, and that means, that carry means a lot for me and the viewers because that, that shows, first of all, we've got a problem, okay? We've got a bit of an issue there, yeah? Secondly, we need to do something about it. And as you said, behind closed doors, this was going on. And here on Positive yeah. Minds today, I'm telling everyone out there that, you know, do not suffer in silence. And Sudesh will be with me on this one. Do not suffer in silence. If anyone makes you feel uncomfortable, um, you know, on a daily basis as well. I mean, we, we like you just spoke about Bollywood, the films where, where, where the woman yeah. gets mad, when she goes into the house and the sus makes her life hell, you know. I mean, that kind of scenario should not be going on today and if anyone listening out there is is actually suffering from any such violence a man woman whoever you are you know here's Sudesh Powell you know she's here to help you in the West Midlands and you know just, just give her a little shout another thing I want to say Sudesh is that domestic violence isn't only just about um physical violence I mean what about the mental side you know it's, some people get belittled you know like the the, sus, the law that goes to the house or or the man with the wife you know people get belittled by their partners by their in-laws i mean mentally there's a side to it as well isn't there yeah there is and that's why um the government released new legislation which is about coercive control because lots of people think that oh because i didn't get hit it's not domestic abuse or oh, it's just gala garda he just gets angry then they calm down and it's fine again um and we call this like there's like a cycle you know there's the honeymoon period things are fine then things start to build up and you know something's going to happen then it happens and then we're all back to normal again and and so some women go or men and men go through this cycle over and over again but actually coercive control is new legislation that's brought about and it really looks at the more mental side of it, the controlling side of it. So controlling what you do, where you go, who you speak to, what you wear, what you eat, where you work, you know, all of those things. Because that's none of that's actual physical abuse, but the psychological impact is huge. Now, in my in my history, I've also worked with um, women who have suffered with very severe mental health problems. Um, and these women are those who've been in hospital in psychiatric units. And they're well enough to leave the hospital, but not well enough to live on their own. And when we've talked to those women, all of them have had history of child sexual abuse, um, adult like um, domestic abuse and sexual abuse as adults. Um, and all of these women who we worked with have got now very severe mental health problems. So um, personality disorders, bipolar, they've got physical problems in their body uh, as an impact of their mental health, um, all relating to some form of abuse that they've experienced. So before we used to know that mental health, uh, domestic abuse and psychological abuse has a mental impact on you. We know that. Um, and that can, you can suffer depression and anxiety. But now we also know that because of the effect it has on your brain, um, that psychological abuse and the effect it has on your body, um, you now can suffer with other health, physical health conditions like early onset diabetes, cancer, heart disease. Who stems from that? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. From this mental health issues and the, and witnessing and seeing. This is why children are impacted on it so much. So just by seeing somebody being abused it can trigger in your mind survival mechanisms which then release chemicals into your body and overexposure of those chemicals can lead to these conditions and and we know the research the science backs it now so this is why sometimes people stay in their home and they think Jal, you know the children still need the father or the mother even though they're abusive what they don't know is that the effect that this has on their children can be lifelong and can be life limiting as well the research tells us that people, children who have experienced or witnessed abuse, if they don't get the right help, could die 20 years earlier than people who experience no abuse. And that's huge, 20 years difference because yeah. you didn't get help when you needed it. Excellent. And talking about help, Sudesh, okay, we're on positive minds here now. And I, I, yeah. I'm no expert, you're, you're the expert. But what I'm going to say one thing is that to everyone out there that as a Sikh community, we are moving forward. I'll tell you why we're moving forward, guys, because we're actually doing this interview right now. 
okay? And this is on the Sikh channel. So we're sending out the message to the whole Sikh community, me and Sadesh, and you know, there's many other people out there that, you know, respect each other. Piyar Dinaro, Gala Nakoto, you know, Maruna, you know, all, all these things are now just passed. You know, we've moved on now, and there's some laws in this country and around the world that are, you know, am I right to do saying that some of these are criminal yeah. uh, incidents? It's classed as yep. a criminal activity yep. to to belittle someone mentally, to hit someone. Realistically, is they are classed as criminal activities. Is that am I right or am I wrong? No, absolutely right. You know, and, and you know, the, sorry. legislation. Um, so the coercive control oh. legislation is punishable by a sentence in prison. Oh, there you go. Okay, so you know we need to move on as a community, and if it's happening behind closed doors in anyone's house, you know, um, just reach for help. Just, just reach out. Don't suffer. We're in 2020. We're in 2020 now. Yeah. So let's just move on. Let's just get along. And as you said, Sudesh, yeah. like the hardest part is sometimes with a woman, she's in a relationship with the guy, and you know, everyone around her is saying, "Go and eat the guy like the diet and turn Go and eat is divorce I mean all that now but I'll tell you one thing Sadesh, I've noticed a lot of women and men have actually taken the steps in the community to go forward and yeah. I said like, you know what I'm not going to tolerate this and done something about it yeah absolutely and, and I think it is slowly changing um there's still I think that people in our community stay longer in those relationships because of the other uh, issues around honor and fam family honor and parents thinking worried about what they might think but ultimately, yeah, people are thinking, I'm not going to stand for it. Um, and um, that I do want to. We've had girls, poor girls come from India, who've married here, five, six months down the line being abused. And actually, they've said, you know what, we're not going to take it. People send their, their daughters, their children here for a better life. Um, and um, they don't come here expecting to be beaten exactly, up and abused. Exactly, exactly. Assaulted yes. or insulted. Uh, belittled and all sorts you know so they are taking the step and you know that people are being prosecuted for it and actually as an organization we encourage prosecution we encourage yes. our victims to go to the police and we will help them to make those statements um, we work very closely with the police and if police aren't listening we'll actually pick it up with higher ranking officers and say excuse yes. me yes. The situation here. here's the evidence uh, you need to do something about this so um, yeah, so we, we do work very, very closely with the police. Excellent. Thank you, Sudesh. Thank you so much. So how can we stop this? What kind of helplines are available, uh, please, Sudesh? If someone listening right now thinks, you know, I, I want to reach out and get some help, what's the yeah. best website or numbers they can call, please? Yeah. So um, in the West Midlands, we run a helpline, um, and the telephone number for this helpline is 0800 953 nine triple seven so oh eight hundred nine five three nine seven 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 i'm happy to give my number out and i have people phoning me all the time asking for help and my number is zero seven nine three zero four nine two four six seven and if i can't help you because i'm in the west midlands we make it our business to contact an agency close to where you live. So if you're in London okay. or you're up or somewhere in York or somewhere like that, we will find those agencies that can assist you and we will handhold you to get help from that agency. So yeah, it's absolutely no problem. The fact that we are so far away from you possibly, just give us a call. I've helped women in London, just the same as I've helped women up in, in York and I've connected them to the right people in their local area. Excellent, superb, Sudesh. Thank you so much for that. So there you go. So there she's here. Uh, if you've just joined us, you're watching Positive Minds with me, Jake Singh. Uh, today I have with me Sudesh Power. We've done some great stuff to uh, eradicate domestic abuse and he's a human activist in the UK in the West Midlands. Um, Sudesh, so I believe you, with all this going on, all the good stuff you're doing around you, which is amazing, you also re recently released your own board games out. Please tell me more. Yeah, so... Um Again, because I've seen the impact of what domestic abuse does to people, and actually what we know now as well is that it costs the government £66 billion a year, domestic abuse does. And, um, you know, we look at the debt that we're in as a country. That's a lot of money, isn't it? If we could eradicate yeah. domestic abuse, we could get rid of it. Not only would we be saving the government, but also we would be saving lives. So yeah. for me... The only way to do that is through education and raising awareness and changing behaviours. So my games, which I came up with, which are designed and developed by me, um, are about teaching children as young as five about abuse, about 
healthy relationships about behavior so how to behave positively not in a intimate relationship at that age but with your friends your peers so you know you know we've seen a lot about bullying very recently so we even touch on things like that but also we talk about to children about how to safeguard themselves so Excellent. To talk Excellent. To if, you're, if you're upset about something or if you're scared something's happening to you that you're you're not happy about or are worried it doesn't feel right those are the things that we talk about and we talk about online safety we talk about um we talk about emotions uh, and things like that so that's for schools uh primary schools and then we've got a second game as well which is for secondary schools which is about abuse so this is about relation abuse within relationships intimate relationships and we talk about things like coercive control forced marriage on a base violence about exploitation about Super. the impact of yeah, so, and these, the way that these are used is that a school would buy one or an agency would buy one and they keep it, they use it again and again and again. And we know children learn through repetition. So if they yeah. use the game over and over again, they will start to slowly, it will start to sink in because we've got to change mindsets at a young age. Once they get to 15, 16, it's almost like, it's very difficult at that point to change children's mindsets. So that's why I decided we've got to start early, but in a safe and a child friendly way. Hence why there's two separate games and one is much more simplistic, but about behaviors and feelings, safety, safeguarding and things. And then the secondary school is more to do with uh, abuse itself. But also you could use it with adults, the secondary school one. I tested it on parents when we trialed the games. Super. And actually, and actually, even one of the parents, um, because she felt so comfortable after playing the game, actually revealed that she had experienced abuse as a child. She'd never told anybody that before. So it's even open, getting people to open up about what's happened, which is what we need Excellent. them to do. Excellent, yeah. excellent, superb. Okay, so uh, your games are available out there. Fair play, yeah? Okay, so the games, guys, get in touch with Sadesh. Sadesh, and she'll be more than happy yeah. to give you more details. Sadesh, we've only got a few minutes left, and I could talk to you forever. Okay, so very quickly, yeah. I'd just like to say congratulations. I understand that you've recently been going to be awarded the British Empire Medal for all the work you've been doing. Well done. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's a great honour. I feel I feel brilliant. I mean, like you know, I had a, um, a lot of fuss over me. At, it was last year, Christmas now, um, in the New Year's and stuff. So um, it was really a, a, unusual because we actually had a twenty fifth wedding anniversary as well. And so, oh, wow. um, yeah, we celebrated the anniversary with a big party and announced to the family that I'd been awarded this medal. Unfortunately, I haven't had it yet because because of COVID. Obviously, oh, there's no gosh. gatherings and things. So I missed a a garden party at the queen's as well which hopefully i'm in the at the front of the list for next year oh, of um, course you will so, be of course you will be <laughs> yeah so hopefully yeah we'll, we'll it will happen and i'm really looking forward to receiving it because it's a it's a great accolade um for the work that i've done but also it means that somebody's rubber stamped the work that i'm doing which makes other people Excellent. stand up and listen to me so to have those initials at the end of your name it just means that more people are, are, are going to listen to what you've got to say because because somebody said hey, listen, let me tell you so there, Cheryl, right? i could listen to you forever i, I could listen to yeah. you forever because your advice is great and the work you're doing out there is amazing and you know what thank you for it, providing hope for people out there uh, hopefully you'll watch this program thinking that you know we can't we don't have to suffer this we can do something about it so Sadesh, thank you so much for joining us today on positive minds and good luck with all the work you're doing and i can't wait to see you a picture of you holding that british empire medal okay Thank you so much, Shag. Thank you, thank you. So there you guys go, guys. Sadesh Powell from West Midlands, uh, United Kingdom. We came on there, gave some great advice from me to you guys. Do not suffer in silence, okay? And keep keep you keep yourself inspired. Keep moving forward. And you know what? Keep smiling. Why would you get Why would you give